creating what you remembering that mindset and managing that inner mindset of what to do. And as we go through the processing of equine that, we're creating that roadmap. What are your dreams? What are your values of be believing that and your role models? Then that reflects into your mind of what you can do. You're creating the blueprint for the future. You're making that a real statement. Through all of this, what are you doing? You're creating your mental training process. All of that I'm teaching you today and you getting a copy of this PowerPoint and you doing this homework assignment are helping your mental training. You go and you take lessons, you learn how to practice, you learn the different movements and you create that way of seeing what you're going to do, correct? Now, this is your mental training. Because what we're going to do is be able to evaluate that so we can create what it looks like. So what you're doing is activating a part of your brain from your real self-talk. We want to disconnect from the negative real self-talk to the personal best self-talk, which is the negative to the positive. That's what you're basically doing to create where you're going in the future. And what I like is this gives you the opportunity to analyze it and then the motivation to do it. What gets you motivated? Is it a new horse? Is it the next horse show? Is it the possibility of moving up and getting another level accomplished and getting a medal? Is What is the motivation? I think it's really important to realize what your motivation is. You know, I wrote a book called Power to Win years ago, and it was created because I had so many things that I was doing for people because the book is about releasing performance, anxiety, concentration, peak performance. It's about all these things. And we have all those tools activated in our minds of how to do that and managing the whole process of what you're doing. That's the whole core system of what the mindset of what it's all about. Then you get to that motivational mindset and you learn what you need to do to make it happen. What are you learning? How do you learn? We talked about visual, kinesthetic, and auditory. Also, it's also just the power to think about it. The content of what you know and the content of a reframe to change a negative to a positive, or we talk about just canceling it. And the affirmations for the belief change, where do you get the positive verbiage? It's important just to realize that that's what we're doing. The psychology part is the communication of what you're thinking on the brain level, on that conscious level. Yes, I'm a hypnotherapist. Yes, I hypnotize people to help reprogram the subconscious mind. But I want you to learn the processing. And just by making these changes on the conscious mind, you will have a well-informed outcome mindset when you question yourself and you find the solutions to what we're suggesting. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing that the mind can be reprogrammed just like a computer. I'm sure all of y'all have been on computers because you're on the thing tonight. Have you ever had a virus where it kind of ruins some programs and you lose something? I remember the first computer I had was an old Tandy. And nobody told us to save it after you typed in some stuff. So I typed in like 250 names and addresses for a campaign I was working on. Got Someone asked me to go to lunch. I got up and went to lunch and they came back and the screen was blank. I forgot to hit save. Think of your brain. Your brain doesn't have a save button. It saves everything. Isn't that amazing? So I'm going to want you to open your mind that learning right now is the content of a reframe of the information that you're affirming in the mind, your belief to believe. Someone says, well, you know, hypnosis. Oh, my gosh. You know, you're going to make me do something I don't want to do. And I go, well, that's called acting on TV. 
You go in and out of hypnosis all the time. People fill out their forms to me. They go, have you ever been hypnotized? They go, no. I go, well, yes, you have. Have you ever daydreamed about something? Have you ever practiced your, your test in your mind? You're, you're relaxing yourself. Have you been worried about something and made a mountain out of a molehill? You're hypnotizing yourself. You go into an altered state of consciousness and you're doing it to yourself. So what I say is I'm a facilitator, another voice in your mind to make molehills out of mountains. That's what it is. When it does become a well-informed outcome question, you find a solution to it. I'm the solution to help reprogram a subconscious mind, a brain. You can do it yourself. You can read the, in the book I wrote, Power to Win, at the end of each chapter, I have the I form for everybody. They can do it. So the agenda part of this is evaluating your beliefs. I gave you all the exercises to do that for yourself. Then when you evaluate your beliefs, you see which ones need to be changed. If I had a limiting belief that I would never be able to speak or meet Robert Dover or meet Lyndon or meet any, you know, I wouldn't be here. And when I started out, everybody told me, this is 22 years ago, you'll never get, you'll never make it there. You'll never speak there. You'll never be here. I remember someone told me, oh, you'll never make it nationally. Well, I've been on Rachel Ray Show. I've been on a couple other national things. And I chose to just see clients instead of going that route. I like helping people. My purpose is to help you evaluate your belief. My agenda with you is to help you set up a routine. The NLP exercises that I give you and the breathing exercises in here are going to help you create a shift in your routine. And practicing, you know what practicing is. I think every person that rides a horse and takes lessons knows what practicing is. I think I learned that many, many years ago. It's a positive emotion that can help improve your performance if you practice it with a positive mindset. I remember years ago, I was speaking at one of the, um, with Debbie McDonald and the group, and I forgot where we were anyway. And my daughter was with me because she's also a hypnotherapist too. And my daughter interrupted me while I was speaking and I'm not used to that. I'm not used to being interrupted. I thought that was a little rude of her, but I was talking about our energy and stuff. She raised her hand and was talking about smiling, releasing endorphins in your brain to feel good when you're practicing. And she raised her hand. She's mom. You know what? I read an article of this research study. That even if you fake a smile, it still releases endorphins. So sometimes if you don't feel it, fake it. Create that positive emotion when you're learning, improving your performance. Practice adding that mindset to what you're doing because we have a new neurological pathway. So your brain is made up of all these neurons. And when you learn something new, there's a reticular nerve ending in there that does different things. I'm going to teach you one thing it does. It repeats itself, and as you practice, you're creating new neurological pathway, which creates a muscle memory, which creates an autoresponder that you automatically do it. As you have that, and you, you have the, neural, the, the pathways in the brain of how to do something, then you start creating a personal mastery of doing it better with the state that you're in. Then you're creating that autoresponder of your personal best. When we do that, we're incorporating a lot. The reticular nerve ending that I'm mentioning, I want to tell you there's a negative of it too. It focuses on what you think. So let's say you're focusing on what something is bad or negative, it, it finds all of the negative. But the one thing it does in life when it's looking at stuff, if you are buying a car, let's say, and you go on the lot and you pick out a car, and you think, you know, you've never seen this one on the road and you're going to get it because it's special. Then you leave the lot and all of a sudden you notice there are a lot of those white Hondas out there. They're everywhere, but you never noticed them before. Because the reticular nerve ending didn't have it at the forefront to think about. That's like sounds. 
I remember one time I was at, a, we had a barn and we were right next to I-95 and I'd been going there riding for years. My sister came to see my new horse and she gets out of her car. She said, how can you handle the noise here? I go, what noise? Because my brain was not focusing on it. After she said that, it did. So you ever found something else that you're focusing on that you're doing wrong? Like I never get my lead changes. I never get my tempties. You start creating that. I need you to start paying attention so you reframe that, you readjust it so you can find that personal mastery of creating it the way you want to, to be that personal best you, to have that inner voice inside of your mind. Then you write the script to what it looks like. Now, a lot of you, anybody that's met me, anybody that's seen me, anybody that's heard me speak, I cannot speak anywhere without going over the slide. I just can't because I've learned even more. So many people go and try to perform and learn and do things with no fuel. A car doesn't go very far without gas or electric. A horse doesn't do well unless he's fed. We're living, breathing human beings. I'm not a nutritionist. Legally, I cannot say what I'm about to say, but I really don't care. I'm giving you a metaphor. Find a good, healthy food plan. Protein is important. I put on there, learn how much protein you need. Premierprotein.com, if you go on there, there's a calculator and you get a good guesstimate. You get a really good guesstimate. Very important. I teach about premier protein. I don't own any stock in it. I don't, doesn't behoove me whatsoever, except for share what I've learned that works. They have a great shake. It's 30 grams of protein and low in calorie, and it's very healthy and very good. I've had it, I've gone through very, so many medical places to make sure that I don't tell anybody something that is not good. I like to be in charge. I like to know that when I suggest something, not only does it work for me, but it has a good way of managing what you need to manage. And it has a good way of being where you want to be. Healthy, physically, mentally, and emotionally. So just trust that mindset, making sure you get the protein before you ride and before you show even for lessons, so your brain is working. Very important that we learn this mindset and we accept the reality that this is part of the equation. So learn how much protein you need. That mindset, and as we go into the next part of this, I want to go into what we do as a human. Because letting go of fear and anxiety is a fear, is it real? What triggers your fear? What triggers your fear? Figuring out what that is for you. What is anxiety? Where do you feel it? Learning these things about how you respond will help you get to the next phase of your personal best. Focusing on your solutions, not the problem. Each obstacle is an opportunity for you to learn. As you create a mindset of being your personal best, you're always solutionizing. If you can't do this, how do I solutionize it? The brain will produce a solution if you ask it to. What is the solution when you have a problem? Making that mindset and coming up with a good way to ask about it, find it. Also asking yourself. Asking your trainer. If you're not getting to something, what is the solution to manage it? Focusing on solutions and not the problem is huge. Avoiding taking it personally. Everybody's worried about what everybody's thinking about them. You know, you know, lashing out at someone else. Most people are focused on themselves. They're not thinking about you. But we're so worried about what they're thinking that we waste a lot of time and energy being aware of 
being in your lane, doing your personal best is about you. No matter where you show, no matter what level you go, no matter where you are. And creating that incredible, incredible ability to find that mental image of your role model. I mentioned earlier, I'm repeating a lot of my stuff is repetition is my best friend because I'm chunking it into ways your brain is absorbing it. And these are homework assignments for you when you get this PowerPoint. Create and use mental image, detail, specifics, realistic to what you can do. And that's what you, how you build with your trainer, with your horse, with your knowledge. We create that mental mindset as we manage the inner voice across the board because we're finding that mindset. Remember, these are for you to go through and evaluate yourself because as you get to the next phase, you're going to learn this self-discipline with a positive attitude. Attitude is a choice. It's a choice to be happy, to be sad, to be, to, it's a choice to believe in yourself. It's a choice to figure out your routine and have time management so that you are always on time. We started off this today. It's learned behavior. Focusing on your self-talk and staying positive is important for your self-discipline. On YouTube, Laura King YouTube, there's um. Hypnosis, a free download. There's a bunch of them. One of them is called self-discipline. It's one of my favorite ones to listen to. Because what it does, it puts me in control of myself and it helps me develop my inner core the way I want it to be in that mindset, to always be on time, to always be in sync with my routine and what I do. And then really, this is really important. I don't care who you are, where you are, and what you do, and how and what you're going to do in the future. Let go of jealousy. Let go of judgment. Either the worst viruses on this earth. Negative energy creates negative energy. It's incredible. It's so, it's so destructive. Because it creates, and as you practice, evaluate what causes it and release it. And if you have jealousy and you don't like what that looks like, you're never going to get there because your brain has a belief system that you, you don't like it. You don't want to be that. So you really have to let go of it and create that attitude of gratitude to build that positive emotional bank account inside of yourself. Do you know what? Happiness is contagious. I go to a store and if I'm checking out and the clerk is in a bad mood, by the time I walk away, she's smiling and happy because I compliment something, her necklace, her hair, her glasses, something. And I gave her a feel good that'll expand for the day. It's contagious. When you go to the show, if you, if you walk into the show and you feel good about your performance, you strengthen your own self-image with your own protocol. Releasing all limiting beliefs, not thin enough, not tall enough, not young enough, not old enough. Now, who would think not old enough? I don't know. When I started my first business, I was never old enough to be there. And I always said that. So now, you know what I always say? I'm always telling everybody I'm a year older. I'm almost 68. No, right now I'm 67. But I always say, because I like being older. Now, you thought that would go away. You Who'd have thunk I'd still be saying it at this age? But it's a habit. The basic core is not being enough. All of us are perfect enough. All of us are more than enough. All of us are. Get rid of that limiting belief, please. Because the impact of a limiting belief is the belief is defined how you think. The influence is how you act. It defines into the events of your life and it's reinforced and creates your belief to be stronger. That's a huge slide there. Think about what the impact is. You are what you think. A thought creates a physical reaction. Your imagination is stronger than knowledge. Choose a purpose. Make a plan of what you're doing. 
you have this mindset of time coding, of placing what you do, and believing in what you do. These are all homework assignments. Create a pre-ride routine, a pre-ride homework, writing routine on show day. What does your day look like? Plan it, time it. When I go to a new location and I'm doing something, I time myself for everything I've got to do. Then I, when I go to do it for real life, I'm on time. That's a dress rehearsal. One of the times I went to speak somewhere, I had been talking to people about dress rehearsals and a lot of people were doing it. I noticed, well, now there's a new mindset to really do a dress rehearsal because I was finding people are going to shows with new hats, new boots, new coats and wondering why they felt different. Practice at home. A dress rehearsal. Back to the self-discipline again. What's the definition of self-discipline? It's the mind program of self, but it's the program of what the discipline needs to be for the behavior that you want, for the things you want. It's the ability to have that mind that you automatically, not because someone's making you, you're choosing your new habits of thinking, behavior, and actions, and reactions, and what to do. Therefore, your mind is going to allow it to be who you are. Choosing to have self-discipline, but learning what that needs to be is helping you find that task that you want to create. By doing that, you're going to create a quicker way to getting to where you want to be. I'm being repetitive here for those that have heard me before because I find it to be the most important thing on this earth in the processing of changing thoughts. When you think a negative thought, say the word cancel, erase, delete, do something to get rid of it. An actionary word. Replace the old thought with a new one. And if you can't, think of a purple elephant. What's a purple elephant? Absolutely nothing. But guess what the brain will do? It'll eliminate that negative connotation to whatever the negative was, and you forget about it. Like the brain doesn't hear don't or not. If I say, don't think about the black horse, what are you thinking about? My black horse has a long, beautiful mane and he's gorgeous. So if you don't want to do something, cancel the don't and say it the way you want to do it. Really think about what you want. And here's a good exercise. What are the negative comments and thoughts you say all the time, the things you say? You say, you think, Write them down. Because what I found out many years ago, I would ask people that, but they couldn't come up with the positive to replace it with because they were so into what they, their habit patterns of how they thought. Usually it comes from before, I guess one kid said to me, she hates math. No wonder she's having trouble with math. I go, has anybody ever told you they hate math? Oh, my mother hates math. The kid was really good at math, but she hated it. So that was a learned behavior. So then you go over here the way you would like it to be, to think it through, to create the impact of what it looks like to let go of it. You're letting go of that inner mindset of managing what you need to do. So I want you to, I want you to do this homework, print this out. You can make your own sheet and just put a line down. Then you write it down, you you. Cut it in half and you get rid of the half of the negatives and you practice the positive. Let them be your all your new mantras. Do you know that you, this is written a lot of places? I read it everywhere. Your horse takes his cues from you. He's a mirror of you. Your mood, your stance, your tent. If you're tension, nervous, anything, the rushing, everything, your horse reads your energy faster than you read his. So you want to be aware of what yours is, because the ultimate goal is for you to achieve what you want. And it's that mindset to reach that unconscious competence. So your unconscious confidence can be there for you. Your unconscious competence is your skill, your ability and your unconscious confidence. And how can you achieve this? I mentioned earlier, there are exercises in here for you. There's a breathing exercise. There is a focus exercise, how to sit in one place and practice focusing. 
I want these exercises to become what you can do, breathing, how to take a breath, how to do your stomach, your chest, your nostrils, to really feel that upright position so you get your body functioning. I had one lady one time that I was really working on her riding and everything. So she finally goes to the show and she'd been doing great at home and breathing. The trainer was so excited. She comes back in. She said, I went to the show and I wasn't breathing again. And I'm sitting there thinking, wait a minute, you've been doing so well now. I go, oh, did your mother ever tell you to suck your stomach in and you'll look thinner? <clears throat> you ever tried to ride a horse and suck your stomach in at the same time to look thinner? She goes, oh my gosh, I do that every time I go down center line. And I go, oh, you're not going to look thinner, number one. Number two, you cannot suck your stomach in and breathe at the same time. Oh. So we worked on her relaxing her stomach muscles and breathing. So she practiced these. The next show, she did fabulous. The trainer said, what are you doing? She said, I'm not going to tell you. Really think about what causes it. Exercise number four is really choosing a word and repeating it out loud to impact the noticeability of your words out loud, practicing your self-talk. In that mindset, what we're doing, we're creating a content reframing, the content of your words and thoughts. We're reframing your words and thoughts at a deeper level. Associating negative feelings. We're disassociating because you want to get rid of the negative feelings. Smiling and reframing that. Anchoring the positive emotions is improving your performance. Even if it's a fake smile. Even if it's a fake smile. Becoming closer to your teammates, creating rapport. Whomever you're around, not having an attitude of negativity about neutralizing. Because those attitudes affect your performance. Anchoring the positive emotion that helps your performance is going to establish that through your rapport with your teammates. Your affirmations of belief change, that's that chart that we went through. And coming up with outcome. What is your outcome you want? And then all of this is about visualization. Pretend it, imagine it, visualize it, which my MP3s will help you do. From being on tonight, you're going to get a copy of the PowerPoint and you're going to get a hypnosis session called Personal Best to visualize. And as we create that mindset, we're creating a work-life balance to help you achieve that internal balance of self. So in this, as you're, you have homework, you're understanding how the brain functions, and you have the ability to create your outcomes the way you want. You can do it. Think about that. So I know we want to do a drawing, and I was supposed to stop in the middle, but I was on a roll, and I didn't. Um, do you want to do the drawing now? Any questions? Yes, and I, drawing? I didn't dare dare interrupt you after you said how much you hated to be interrupted. <laughs> I would get. I'd like good interruptions. Thank you so much, Laura. My brain is circling around, even though I've heard you talk so many times. It always makes me makes me start thinking around and around and around more and more. Um, and uh, thank you very much for that very generous donation. So anything else you'd like to add, Laura, before we I just sit want down and do our to, I want everybody just to take a moment and really believe that you are what you think, because I think we forget that. We're, we're, a, we're a society of so much stuff coming in. Our brains are so incredible. They cannot make a computer as strong as our brains. Learning these techniques, learning how to be aware of it, we can create the filter systems ourselves of what works and what doesn't work. When you do that, you create a better source of how you can manage whatever is happening to anything.
for any emotional mindset, you can create an outcome to be healthy and happy mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. That's what I try to teach. That's just so important. And that's really important. And visualize it. Thank you for having me on here. I really enjoy what I do. I guess you kind of know that. But thank you. Thank you so much, Laura. Okay, and thank everybody. It's been a great season of what's now known as D for K Up. And uh, hope we'll see you all next season. Okie doke. Thank you. All the thank questions? yous are coming in. Laura, I don't know if you can see the chat, but all the thank yous are coming in. Oh, you. I can't see the chat. I have it. For some reason, I got screen share. Oh, cool. Oh, there. I yeah. see it now. Thank you. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you. All right. Great evening. Good night, everybody. Awesome.